Well, hello. I would very much like to welcome you to another episode of Rahula Stupa. This one was recorded in Liverpool and stars the wonderful, multi-talented Kate Robbins. You're going to enjoy it. She's extremely good. Uh, thank you for your massive support over the years with these podcasts. Do tell your friends if you enjoy them. Um, do support us by going to gofasterstrike.com, buying some books, top trumps, uh, or DVDs or downloads, or become a monthly badger at gofasterstrike.com slash badges. We have plans to do a um, an exciting sitcom-based sci-fi project later in the year, which uh, we will need money for, but we are using the ad money from the podcast to make that. So uh, anything you give will just go towards making more podcasts, which is a nice thing to think, isn't it? That's how lovely is that? Um, we are doing some more live shows. I'm wearing a hairband. It's the kind of guy I am now. Uh, and if you go to richhang.com slash gigs, you can find out about those coming up gigs, mainly in London, in Mondays in March and April the 6th. And we're also uh, Birmingham and Norwich, so those may be sold out as I speak. Uh, but check the venues for returns. Come on, let's watch an episode of Rahela Stupa, or listen to it with our ears. And uh, thank you for your increased particip- continuing uh, participation in this project. Oh, look, I've got, I've got like a knots and crosses grid come across me. Oh, God, what's that mean? It's the omen. I'm going to be killed in a game of knots and crosses. That won't make sense if you're listening at home. But if you're watching the video, oh, look, I'm going in and out of it. Ah, oh, this is the most trippy thing I've ever seen. I am on drugs. I'm on drugs. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Liverpool Playhouse. Please welcome a man who's tripping off his nuts on no sleep. It's Richard Herring. Yo, yo. Hello. Hello, Liverpool. It's great to be back. I'll fight you all. Come on. Hello. Welcome to Richard Herring's Lamb Banana Spit Roasting Telethon (laughs) podcast. What we're doing, uh, we're uh, <laughs> going to come up with a new podcast idea. This podcast idea is we're going to try and raise thumbs via a telephone uh, to organise it so the super lamb banana, the people in Liverpool will be aware of everyone else's thing. In Liverpool, people at home, they've got a sculpture which is half a lamb and half a banana because that's just the kind of thing they, they like it. <laughs> and it's very sexy. Uh, is having sex with a lamb banana cheating? I don't know if it is. Uh, what we're going to do is try to raise money for the surviving beetles to spit roast. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of money, well, for Paul, and there's so much for Ringo. While Pete Best watches, saying, oh, that could have been me in that. <laughs> See how we do with that. So I was at, though, I was hanging out in Penny Lane the other day, funny enough, talking to the Beatles. Uh, chatting to a barber showing photographs of every head he's had the pleasure of know, to know. I said, what, you've taken a picture of everybody's head who's ever come in here? That's a bit weird, isn't it? He said, no, it's not just a selection of photos to show what haircuts they could have. You've literally taken a photo, then this is the 1960s, gone to a shop, had that printed up and then put it in the window. Presumably you've had thousands of people with this barber shop and you've filled the window with every single photo of those people's heads. I mean, that's a bit weird. And then he said, no, it's normal. He said, it's the kind of thing a serial killer would do. He said, don't worry about me. There's a banker with a motor car. He just doesn't wear a Mac in the rain, mate. He's the weird one. <laughs> anyway, that... He, he calls it real estimate. Anyway, that guy, so it's satirising 50-year-old songs. That's what I do. I'm pretty good. <laughs> Showing that. So, um... We're here in Liverpool. Uh, let's see, I've got some jokes about Liverpool for you. Uh, I had, uh, I, it's dominated for me by uh, two cathedrals at either end of Hope Street, which I like the fact there's two cathedrals on Hope Street. The opposing cathedrals, but I hope I'm right for this one. I hope there's a God. Me too. I hope, I hope Christianity's all right. 
There's an Anglican one and a, and a, a Catholic uh, cathedral at the other end. And when the end, day of judgment comes, those two cathedrals are going to rise up and fight it out on Hope Street like sort of <laughs> Transformers. Uh, there's, there's some debate in Liverpool about whether Catholicism or pro pro Protestantism is the right one. Uh, I'm going to sort that out for you tonight, ladies. It's Protestantism is the correct one, so... Uh, it's got the biggest, that's the biggest cathedral in the UK, the Anglican one, so it's got to be right, isn't it? God's not going to go, God's going to go, yeah, I'll have the biggest one, he's not going to have the second. <laughs> sort it. And there's more to Liverpool uh, than the Beatles, of course. Uh, it's also the slave trade. The, uh, <laughs> built on the slave trade. Uh, they, uh, my favourite story I found on Wikipedia. Uh, is of a tough... They're, they're, Liverpool are tough crowds, right? And they don't take any shit. Uh, they don't like people joking about Liverpool in Liverpool, even though they've got the best sense of humour in the world. They don't, they don't like that when that sense of humour is turned on them. Uh, the best uh, heckle story I, I found on Wikipedia is an actor called George Frederick Cook who was drunk on a performance and got hissed by a Liverpool audience. And this is what he said. I have not come here to be insulted by a set of wretches... Every brick in whose infernal town is cemented with African blood. <laughs> Fucking hell. Now back to the play. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if he got out of the city alive, that guy. I'm not, I'm, I'm not condoning what... That is awful what he said there. That is a terrible true thing to say. So it's a terrible... <laughs> terrible like, true thing to say. Uh, We'll get on. Uh, I'll, be, I'll, I'll give you one more fact about... Uh, people in Liverpool are very proud. Uh, lots of charities started here. The RSPCA started here. Liverpool are very proud of that. But, uh, you know, that's not something to be proud of. But then where are people cruelest to animals? Liverpool, let's start up there. That's where we're going to have to start. It's a great place. So uh, <laughs> I do love it here in Liverpool. We'll talk more next week if you, if you can get back. If you can come back next week. <laughs> oh, so uh, we've had a switch of guests. So... Just in order. My guest this week is probably best known for her portrayal of Joan in Sex Lives of the Potato Man. That's why, that's why we're here. I've had many of the stars of Sex Lives of the Potato Man on this show, and I plan to get them all on eventually. Will you please welcome the amazing Kate Robbins, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Come in, sit down. Here's the microphone. There you go. I'll pour, I'll pour you some water out as well. Look, I'm a very polite host. Thank you. They could have done that before. But I've got to do it myself. I've got to do everything. I do the clapperboard, I do the water. Terrible, isn't it? Anyway, welcome to the show. How You've are you, Kate? showing a little bit at the I back know, of those jeans. Let's just do, uh, get you excited before we start. <laughs> We've had a kiss. It's all going well. Um, I'd forgotten about that film, Sex Lives of Potato Men. Thanks very much you? for that. How could you have forgotten? Oh, dear. Did anybody see it? Ooh. Yeah? Not as bad as everyone says, was it? I mean, everyone says it was really bad, though. But it's not, it's not it that bad. It was lottery money, wasn't it? It was lottery was it? funded, yeah. Yeah, blimey. Yeah. I mean, it is a lottery, isn't it? The British film industry. Um, <laughs> so, I'm very delighted to have you on. We've had your uh, daughter on before. Yeah. Emily Atak. Yeah. Was, is, came out of you. Yeah. Like a Russian doll. <laughs> she did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of talent. Yes, you did. But you're from, I will talk about that first. You're a, you're, a, you're a huge showbiz dynasty, the Robbins and many other surnames. You're mm. a, your, your mother was the cousin of Paul McCartney? Yeah, first cousins, yeah. Yeah, and then. You see, you've got to understand when you come from Liverpool, when you grew up in Liverpool, as I did in Zigzag Lane in West Derby, um, and you went to school, um, you know, people, uh, everybody said that they were related to Paul McCartney, so that wasn't. It wasn't really a thing, you know, yeah. you, nobody believed you anyway, so you never told anyone. Well, and everyone who's under 50 is related to Paul McCartney. I mean, it's their, yeah. their dad. But so it's, um... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, so it's a, what you have is a wonderful family of gorgeous English rose women. Beautiful women, I would say. makeup. And, no, well, thank you. Uh, and Ted Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... The, the Sorry, whole family was concentrated that. on creating yeah. these beautiful women and then yeah. what was left over was... Yeah. <laughs> but what people don't realise about our Ted is yeah. that he is... Um, he's university, you know, he's got a really good degree and he, he looks like an end-of-peer, reactionary, right-wing comic, doesn't he? But he's not, because when he was once warming up um, 
he was warming up the audience for University Challenge and he was getting a really hard time from the students. He was trying to tell his jokes and they were all like, you know, oh, no, sit down, Fed. So, you know, they were really being horrible to him. And Ted said, what are you studying then? What are you studying, love? And she said, uh, uh, madrigals in English literature. And he said, oh, you'll know about Orlando Gibbons then. And then he started quoting some madrigal <laughs> to her. And then he had them in the palm of his hand. That's pretty that. good. That's a pretty good heckle pit put was, down yeah, for that specific <laughs> way his whole life. Madrigals, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So he's clever, Arte. He is clever. And is he, is he, is he well now? He had a, had a bit of a... Yeah, he felt, well, he had a heart attack on stage. Yeah, that's pretty bad, isn't it? Yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> he's got a little thing to stop it ever happening again. OK. Mm. They should give everyone one of those. <laughs> yeah, everyone. <laughs> that's pretty nice. Shit. I'd like one of those. <laughs> so... <laughs> Let's start at the beginning. I, 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 I was doing a show the other week and the makeup artist was your niece, is that right? Yeah, she's beautiful. No, she is beautiful. They're all, there's all these beautiful things. It's an English row, a family of English roses. Yeah. Beautiful. Half very nice. You um, say. Yeah. Half Welsh, not yeah. so English. Okay. Half Welsh. Well, we're all, we're all a mismatch, aren't we? That's the, that's the beauty <laughs> of the old United Kingdom before Brexit. <laughs> I'm assuming Brexit's happened by the time this goes out, but... <laughs> we'll see is that's for people at home to judge um, so well I'm, the thing I'm obsessed with and this is quite an early uh, job on. for you is uh, your Eurovision Song Contest appearance yeah uh, you're in Prima 1980. Donna 1980 1980 the year before Bucks Fizz won the Eurovision Song Contest yes that's right yeah Prima Donna yeah who were quite when I saw Prima three Donna three boys three girls yeah well, it's quite a Bucks Bucks Fizz I thought you'd steal, stolen the star from Bucks Fizz. No, they Bucks stole Fizz from stole us, yeah. if you don't mind. Yeah. I do. And it was called Love Enough for Two, and it got, we came third in The Hague. And uh, at the time, I remember a few years afterwards, I was slightly ashamed that I'd been in the Eurovision Song Contest and hadn't won. And, and now it's something, you know, we come, always come last every yeah, year. Yeah, third's so now amazing. It's like, now third would be amazing. They had but put it in had, The Hague, though, did they? I mean, that seems it was a, in the big, Hague and we a bit had extreme. This... <laughs> <laughs> Not that bad. Oh, that's a good guy. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to use that. But we had this um, Dutch um, girl who looked after us, and she was called Vanin, Vanin van Vlotten, and she was so sexy. You know, the way that the uh, Dutch people are talking about the sex very openly all the time. And she was just like, she sort of hung around with us, and she looked after us, and she said, can I come to see you in England? And she came over, and she shagged all my friends, male and female. <laughs> and she was always talking about the sex, always, always. <laughs> And one morning, this is quite a rude story, you'll probably have to cut this out. Okay. One morning... Um, no, we she, won't. She, she were, <laughs> we were all staying in this, uh, like, tatty little travel lodge or whatever, because we were doing gigs around the country, and she'd come and she was joining us. And she walked in and she oh, that anal shakes really hurts. And she was like... <laughs> she was, she'd had it off with, like, three men that night, and then wow. another, and then a woman the next night, and then it, she was so shakesy. And she then I met her with her years later, and she was married to a diplomat, and she was all, like, normal. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, yeah... Benin and then was she that was dead. But there was lots of sabotage backstage in, in, in the Eurovision Song Contest. Yeah. There were people like, you know, trying to throw red wine over a Hungarian, you know, um, uh, guitarists, white lycra trousers. I did see somebody try to trip somebody up before they went on. It was wow. really, it was quite scary because, you know, you're going out there. It was my first television ever. And I was going out to something like 500 million. I don't know yeah. the statistics, but um, it was terrifying, yeah. Yeah. It's a great song. Do you remember the song? I do. Go on. If there's a room... No, if there's a place in your heart for me, then there's a room in my place for you. Because kind of slight... I've got a love in there. Yeah. Slightly cr creepy. <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> it's Loving sort of like they do that now, don't yeah. they? You can stay here for free if you have, sh have sex with me. <laughs> that's, that's, the new, that's the new thing. Um... <laughs> And they put me in this uh, minimizer bra, I remember, because the other two girls in the group, my sister and Sally Ann Triplett, who's a big West End star now, they were very flat-chested and I wasn't, and they put me in this... Um, they used to bind me up with bandages and then put this minimizer bra over me to make me flat-chested. Oh. And, and then when my arms went up, there were just these big lumps under my armpits. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to go somewhere, hasn't it? Yeah. And Terry Wogan was doing... Oh, do you know what? Getting drunk with Terry Wogan, that was a box tick for me. <laughs> and it was the year that Ireland, you know, had their first win and then right. they went on to win it a hundred times after that. But yeah. he was like, his, you know, his, he really wanted Ireland to win, obviously. 
but he couldn't say that because he was sort of with us. But um, oh, what a great fella, yeah. Yeah. Oh, terrific. And so we out of that, with the the Crossroads come after that came after. Crossroads came after that, yeah. yeah. So you I, played a pop star in Crossroads. Yeah, I got um, headhunted. I was playing in the Old Kent Road. I was living in London by then, and I was playing in the Old Kent Road, and I got headhunted um, by. ATV at the time who were looking for a young unknown to appear in Crossroads and every time I sort of went into the foyer of the Crossroads Motel um, I would sing the song of the record because it was totally corrupt the um, the producer he's dead now I can say it, the producer of Crossroads was on a cut of the royalties of the record right. <laughs> so I'd go in and go you know chalet 23 please more than in love <laughs> and every time I'd get my key I'd start singing it and, um, it, you know, Mrs. Brownlow, the cleaner's there, you know, with the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> the jack cart, it's a typing error. It should say, Mrs. Brownlow hovering in the background, you know. <laughs> um, it, was, it was really, really awful. Yeah. <laughs> well, hovering, hoovering. Yeah. They, 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 they got there in the end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they, they say that you were meant to be recording your song in the... The, the recording basement. studio in the basement yeah. of the Crossroads Motel that yeah. had that famous recording studio yeah. down there <laughs> that they put in for that one episode. But, but it became know, a big hit. It was a big hit. It sold half a million. Yeah. And, um, it, you know, it got me some money for the first time in my life. I had a bit of money, so it was nice. I bought, put a deposit down the house. So, you know, I can't knock it too much, like. Yeah. Sorry, not, I've gone don't all knock scouts. it at all. Don't knock it at all. I mean, is it, uh, what, what is amazing about your career, and people will know you from one or two things, each person, I think, but... You've been in sort of everything over the last... No, I've done, I mean, I have done classic comedy. Yeah. Like, I've done Last of the Summer Wine. That was a great show to do because everybody... It wrapped at half two in the afternoon. Everyone's too knackered and old. <laughs> <laughs> so they said, that's a wrap, half two, great. Got the book. <laughs> um, I've done... Um, I've done... Yeah, I've done loads of classic things like that. I can't think of any of them now. But um, <laughs> no, I have. I've done, you know, Phoenix Nights. And I've, I'm always one episode, Kate. Yeah. That's what they call me. But also, but, but both, I mean, because you started in the early 80s. Mm. And it was it's a, in the sort of slightly old school Well, I was shows. a pop singer yeah. first, remember. Yeah. And, and I sung a songwriter. Yeah. And then I started doing impressions when I was just like singing adverts. I used to sing adverts. Right. You know, I used to do when the chicken back and put the freshness back, do the chicken back and put the freshness back, things like that. And um, I used to then start doing impressions of people. So then I started doing that for a living. Yeah. Which was, you know, and then I started doing Scylla. Because, and the reason I did Scylla, Scylla Black, was because I'd written her theme tune to Surprise Surprise. Yeah. And then, I, you know, she once caught me in the um, corridors. I was doing um, Saturday Live with Harry Enfield. And I was there with the orange wig on. And uh, everyone should say, oh, you're false teeth you do, Vasilla. And I say, sorry, they're my own. <laughs> and I was, like, I was standing there going, oh, all right, oh, oh, yeah, 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 oh, right. And she walked past me in the corridor because she it was the same building. She went, are you okay? What are you doing today? And I was like, <laughs> and I couldn't. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm just doing, just doing this funny show. It's just, and she didn't recognise this after all. So, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. But um, surprise, surprise was um, great because it was the first time I'd ever written a, you know, a theme tune that... Sure. I did a few theme tunes, but yeah. that was the one that, you know, sort of is in people's minds. I think if people usually know the words to surprise, surprise. Yeah. The unexpected hits you. Between the eyes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's laughter, love and joy in disguise. But um, <laughs> the worst part about that programme yes. was I used to have to write the syllograms, which were... Um, somebody thought it was a good idea for Scylla to go around hospitals singing to sick children. <laughs> God rest her soul. <laughs> and, I mean, I love Scylla, by the way. I'm not, you know, slagging her off. She wouldn't mind me talking about her. But she... I, so I used to write the Scyllograms. And there were things like... Um, Laura the lollipop lady <laughs> We think you're awful nice <laughs> I've come to sing this song to you because you've survived diverticulitis twice. <laughs> you know, and it was like... <laughs> and I don't remember another one. Let's laugh, let's cheer, cos Billy hasn't died this year. <laughs> And 
I, I was paid really handsomely to do it, and I, oh, <laughs> and it, it wasn't good. It wasn't no. good. I mean, at the time, I remember thinking this is the worst job you could ever do. But you know, obviously, I look back fondly at it now. Yeah, yeah. Well, but you, but what's interesting, you sort of, and I think maybe a little bit like Les Dennis, who we had on quite recently, you sort of managed to straddle. Uh, both worlds. So you were in the doing yeah. some of the old variety sort of shows, and yeah, as in the eighties, as those as those sort of shows, yeah, of course, carried so, on. But yeah. then you were also working with uh, Sean Hughes and the, the Saturday yeah. Night Live people yeah. in the comic strip and things like that, weren't you? Well, I did still it on Harry Enfield. We had the Scousers. Um, I don't know what real Scousers think about the Scousers as they were <laughs> depicted on. Do you remember it on Harry Enfield? They were ham down, ham down, with the, you know the perm. I think they don't like it. No. I, <laughs> It's nothing like the like, Best sense of humour in the world, isn't it? That's the best sense of humour in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so I went, on, I went on that as Scylla and, and I had a scrap, you know. We did a blind date sketch with the Scousers, which was quite funny. But then, of course, um, I, did, um, I did Dinner Ladies playing yes. um, Babs from Ermston, which was a... Come from Ermston. And she went a bit like this. I don't think we'd get away with it now because I think she was, you know, a bit sort of educationally subnormal, the character. <laughs> And I, I think actually it would not, I don't think we would get away with it. No, now. maybe but not. It's like, um, uh, she knew all the names of the kitchen uh, equipment. Oh, you know, all that kitchen equipment, he'd say to her. And she'd go, uh, the Silver Line 24, that one. Oh, yeah. And he says, oh, you know a lot, don't you? Yeah, I was going to go on Mastermind, but I can't sit on leather. <laughs> and nobody knew it was me for years and years and years. <laughs> and I remember my husband at the time, not with him now, but the, my husband at the time really he didn't want to have sex with me for about 10 days. <laughs> Um, that, that's why we're not together anymore. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was so. That was that was good. I mean, it'd been that. worse if he wanted to have sex with you more. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. that'd have been that's the true. worst. Yeah, perhaps from Ermston. That was a lovely character. I mean, yeah. you know, working with Julie Walters and Celia yeah. Imry and all those. And I, and I did get the second series as well. So it wasn't just one ep. <laughs> no, it was a pro it was full of, it was And you do. And the, oh, well, there's a lovely um, a Victoria Wood sort of tribute uh, impression you do, which is very worth. Uh, Googling and looking up on YouTube, but it's, oh, you, it's I, sing, I do sing, uh, no, I do. Um, Victoria Wood sings Bond themes because um, it's the sort of thing she wouldn't sing, obviously. So it's like in Diamonds Are Forever. <laughs> oh, they stimulate and tease me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you've only lived twice, or so they say. <laughs> um, you don't think that it's nice? You only live twice. Um, da 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 da. Um, I, think, I can't think of any more. I can't do, it. I can't do it without the piano. That's the thing. No, well, it's, worth, it's worth it. It's worth The piano is, is a big part. Gold finger is a man with the widest touch. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his this touch. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a top impression and it yeah. works very Thank well. You. <laughs> it works very well. Uh, she hated it, actually. Did she? <laughs> That's two people who are not with us anymore who are sort of talking about sort of in a rebelled in, 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 in a rough way but yeah. they don't mind well and all the everyone in last summer wine's dead as well it's like you've got their touch of death yeah that's true <laughs> yeah that is true is anyone still alive that you work with <laughs> <laughs> good god that's a very good point <laughs> james frank i've done a movie with him okay there you go you didn't yeah. know that did you i didn't know that it was called uh fly boys oh yeah. i do i do my proper research also Jean he Reno was a was bit in. of a wally James yeah. Franco. Well, at least that's how history will judge him, I think, as a bit of a wally. <laughs> what did he do? Well, he wouldn't rehearse with me. And I was like, you know, I was playing um, a French madam in a brothel, and I had to speak French, which, you know, I did. And uh, I just said, you know, when I do this scene here with you, do you want to do that? And he just said, you do what you want to do, and I'll do what I want to do. And I just thought, what a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I couldn't believe that he just didn't want to run the lines. He was just too big time. Anyway, yeah. there you go. There you go, James Franco's a wanker. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think that's come out, hasn't it? Uh, so I think that's, that's come out <laughs> in, the, in the wash. Um, uh, what else? Well, there's, there's so many things to talk about, it's insane. Uh, let's have a look. Um, oh, got them all, done them all. Uh, look, I want to know about this. I, you did an easy listening album with Nicky Campbell. Yeah. <laughs> let's talk about that for the next half an hour. Yeah. Let's unpack this. Yeah, I did. <laughs> he, he can write good lyrics and, yeah. and tunes, and we wrote, to, we wrote an album together. Yeah. It was very self-indulgent. Yeah. How, did, how did it do in the uh, charts? It didn't sell many. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be Nicky Campbell's fault. Aww. Well, you're a proven hit yeah. maker. Yeah. And but um, 
Can we talk about the Edinburgh Festival? Yes, do, yeah. Do you still do it? Uh, I did do it this year, in 2019. I did this and I did oh. interviews. I did, I, last time I did uh, 2017. But you know, what, you know what it's like. It's I like, do. I mean, if you've never been to the Edinburgh Festival, you've got to go because it is fantastic for comedy, particularly, I think. And um, I took a, a show up there when I was, I was going through my breakup of my marriage. So I didn't want to be doing just comedy. I had this, it was when I was interested in men. I'm not interested in them anymore. But it was about 10 years ago. And I was like, wanted to be a bit of a... And so I was doing music as well, trying to be a bit sexy. And, and then I had this idea. I thought, right, I'm from, originally from Liverpool. I wasn't born here, but I, was, I thought the pool. You know, we call it the pool. Like It's known as the pool. So I did a thing called Songs from the Pool. And I did some songs that were... It gets more interesting, this story, honestly. <laughs> and it was about maritime songs and things like that. And I put my own little slant on these songs. I took a band up to Edinburgh, paid them far too much money... And it had a nice little successful show. It did comedy and music, songs from the pool. So it was like real middle of the road, Radio 2 audience, Nicky Campbell type easy listening audience. <laughs> and it was called Songs from the Pool and I sold out for about three nights. I was chuffed up there for three weeks. You know what it's like, hard work. Yeah. And then I go to the bar after I've done my show one night and I was like, oh, because we'd sold out. And who's sitting there? Michael Barrymore. And he's sitting there looking miserable as usual. And I knew him from years ago. <laughs> And I said, you must come and see my show. It's called Songs from the... <laughs> I wanted to die. <laughs> and I literally just... I quickly just said, it's called Songs from... It's part Liverpool. And he said, it's all right, no, not your, no, no, I know what you're saying, I know what it's called. No, no. Anyway, he came to see through. I'll put the joke in the show the next night, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that was that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, well, then, Spitting Image, of course, as well, you, were the, you did most of the, the female, female voices. voices. Yeah, Spitting Image that was film. like a 10-year job. That, yeah. was, that was a great job. God, we were paid well. Oh, it was great. You'd have John Sessions, Rory Bremner, Steve Coogan, John Thompson, and we'd just be like, and, and, and John Sessions, I remember him refusing to do dog noises, and I won't do fucking dogs. And he was so he was like, we thought, who, do, who does he think he is, you know? And um, I remember John, uh, Steve Coogan saying to me and John Thompson, "What's your five-year plan? You know about our careers?" And me and John Thompson were just like, "Well, we'll get the pub later." I don't know, you know. And we were like, <laughs> "Get him being all <laughs> ambitious." <laughs> and uh, yes, he did rather well, didn't he, he did Steve right, Coogan? He did. Yeah, he did okay. It's all down. It's all down to me. <laughs> but um, I've got a cousin who I don't know if she I don't, I, I don't think she's here tonight Becky are you here if, she, if she's not no good okay I can tell the story it's um, going to go out on the internet no but Becky my cousin Becky um, she came up to the Edinburgh Festival and she's she's known in our family for being thick you see <laughs> and, um, and it's funny because I've got do you know the word cruciverbalist? It means, you know, somebody who loves crosswords. I don't know if anybody here does crosswords, but I love them. And my uncle was a, um, a crossword compiler for the Guardian, the Telegraph and the Times. And I'll tell you about him in a minute. But anyway, so Becky was trying to, I want to be like Uncle Bert. I want to do the crosswords. And so she's doing, and this is, these, are the, these are the sort of things she used to write in her crosswords. E blank blank flightless bed. And we'd go, that's, an, uh, that's emu that is. And she goes, oh, fuck up, put egg. Right? <laughs> Um, she did. <laughs> Maidens danced around these in the spring. I think it was uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters. The answer was um, maple, and she put handbag. <laughs> <laughs> the best one of all was eight letters, and the, the, the clue, uh, the answer, it was seafaring mammals, and the answer was dolphins. She put ship's cat. <laughs> <laughs> For a seafaring mammal. I think it's genius. It's good. But my, um, so my, <laughs> so my uncle Bert, who was a proper compiler, when he died, um, my brother stood up and did a, you know, a thing about him and, and, and told us, or we didn't know this until Ted told us all, he once had a clue sent back to him for being too rude from the Times. Does anybody here do cryptic crosswords? Because if, if you don't, it might, might be a waste of story. Anyway, um, so the clue was, um, a brave man takes it here where hair grows. And the answer... <laughs> The answer was on the chin. <laughs> Two, three, and four. Well, they sent it back, said it was too rude. <laughs> they thought it was up the arse. <laughs> Isn't that great? A brave man takes it here where hair grows, and the answer was on the chin. 
not up the art. The uh, crossover move was invented in Liverpool. Was that invented by your by your uncle? Oh, I think it was before it predates your uncle, doesn't it? What it was crossword? invented. That's what I, That's one of the facts I learned in uh, researching. The crossword was invented in Liverpool. Anyone know that? Yeah. Are you joking? I'm not. It's got to be invented somewhere. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Um, and uh, grumpy old women that you were on tour with yeah. Jenny. Oh God, yeah, they were grumpy Jenny old Eclair. women as well. No, no, I love Jenny. <laughs> love Jenny Eclair. Susie Blake was quite grumpy. Right. Um, <laughs> dear Susie. No, we had we had a laugh, you know. But it was, um, you know, three people together for months, and months, and months. It's a big tour, yeah. Being driven around in a car together, you know. And um, it's not like you're not so you're sort of not you brought together just. For that, we are all totally different people. Yeah. You know, Susie Blake was really posh, and <laughs> I'm not. And she would always say she wanted a new hotel room, whereas I don't mind terrible yeah. hotel rooms. Apparently, he's staying in a bad one tonight, that courtesy of us. It smells, smells of, of socks. socks yeah. Yeah. Well, armpits and socks, it smells Well, of. that's good. You know, we'd put that in specially for you. We thought you'd... <laughs> <laughs> no, Grumpy Old Women was a successful show. Yeah. yeah. And then well, I, I script edited the first uh, run of that. The, uh, Did I was, you? Yeah, I was the script editor. So I went to see it quite a lot as when it was when they were running. Yeah, they in had the first quite one. a few um, different cast yeah, changes yeah. over the years. Uh, and it was the most, it was, it was, a, it was such an unusual thing because it was a theatre full of mainly middle aged women, but yeah. nearly all women. Yeah. Uh, and packed and having the time of their lives, I have to say. Uh, Jenny wrote it with Judith Holder. Yes, yes. And, oh, Jenny's uh, brilliant. And very, very funny. But the noise a group of middle-aged women make when they're on their own laughing at the disgraceful <laughs> thing, it was the most terrifying. That, together, <laughs> 500, 600, 800 of those together yeah, was actually made my sorry, heart go I a bit fast. Sorry, I defend women now. Because, well, no, it was amazing. It was, well, no, I'm, but like men sound like arseholes when they laugh together, don't they? I was saying it was football arseholes, it was just terrifying. It was a terrifying you're not supposed to laugh at football matches, are you? have got that no. wrong. No. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, so that was um, interesting. So It's just good. the sound you don't hear, that's it. You don't often go to... Yeah. Well, I don't, because I'm a man, but there, maybe there's lots of... Yeah. There, aren't, there aren't many shows. It was, a, it was such a great show because it was aiming at that audience that don't have... Sh- didn't have yeah. shows aimed at them, you know, and there and there was an audience for it. As it as I it remember proved. one woman saying to me after a grumpy old woman show, she said, "Eh, hey, you're still doing, you're not doing that spitting images no more." And I said, "No, that finished years ago." And she said, "Oh, I don't know how you pulled all them faces." <laughs> <laughs> so they're they're bringing spitting image back though. Have you been asked to? I return? haven't been asked, no. But I mean, you know, they've probably got some nice young people doing it. Who were you doing on Spitting Images? She said, well, not a bitter way. <laughs> yeah. you, I guess you weren't doing with Mar- Steve Nallen did Margaret Thatcher. Yes, she but... did Margaret Thatcher yeah. like that. And yeah. um, I used to do the, the Queen Mother occasionally. He did the Queen Mother. I'm a German. But, um, but my voice that I did mostly was the Queen, yeah. Yeah. Feely, feely, come to bed once feeling horny. <laughs> <laughs> Which means I'll never be a Dame, I suppose. Uh, you never know. They, they might like you. But, like, um, we used to... Um, an, when we heard that somebody wanted a puppet making of them, like Noel Edmonds was like, why haven't I got a puppet? So they would hold off for ages, like just to annoy them. <laughs> and then when they made it, it was about that big. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny little puppet. Um, and then I met Princess Anne at her, um, um, at her do. And she said to me, you know, she's, she speaks very much through her nerves. Sorry, that sounded like Jimmy Savile. It's gone a bit wrong. <laughs> <laughs> she speaks through her nose, you know, because she's got a long nose, and so when she talks, it's quite sort of like that. And she said to me, what do you do? And I said, uh, I'm an impressionist. And uh, I thought, oh, I wonder if she know, you know, knows that I do it. And then she said, uh, do you have an exhibition on anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and the thing I wanted to talk to you about, there might not be anything in this, but you, did you write the theme to Heil Honey, I'm Home? The, uh, wow. <laughs> the legendary... Listen, I was told there's going to be a sitcom about <laughs> Adolf Hitler and Ava Braun. And, um... <laughs> and it's called Heil Honey, I'm Home. And it went, Hal honey, Hal honey, Hal honey, Hal honey, honey, I'm home. It was like one of those American bewitched type of beautiful yeah. arrangement, I have to say. <laughs> it lasted one week. <laughs> they got taken off, of course. It was so offensive. Amazing, though, to write that. What about yeah, that? Yeah, well, I'll find out everything. Find everything about you. Um, 
<laughs> Let me, I'm going to ask you some emergency questions. Uh, here's a new emergency question. Uh, who is the most famous person you've been in a lift with, preferably that you haven't got into the lift with, who's been in the lift when you've got in there? Brad Pitt. No way. <laughs> had a drink with them. Um, well, you don't only say I had a drink with Brad Pitt. Yeah. I mean, I was in the same hotel, same lift, went out, we got, went to the same bar, and I just pretended to everyone afterwards that I was chatting to him. I wasn't. Right. Yeah. He's absolutely gorgeous. I felt like, oh, God. You I, had 30 I, seconds I had in a lift with him. had a bit of a turn when I saw him. Yeah. The, he's taller than you think. Right. He's beautiful. Yeah. I was going to lick his face. <laughs> Sometimes I'm mistaken for Brad Pitt. I genuinely... <laughs> I genuinely, I was in a cab once. Don't laugh, Chris Evans, at that. I was in a cab once. And I think the cab driver genuinely thought I was Brad Pitt. I was a bit, yeah, I was a bit, you know, I had long hair. He kind of copied, he copied my style for a while, Brad Pitt. I think he must have seen me. Good looking. Good I am looking. good looking, that's you all I wanted looking. to hear. Just wanted to hear, you want to lick my face, that's all I wanted to hear. Um, uh, if you could have any one item from uh, any art gallery or museum in the world and you're allowed to take it home and keep it, all the museums and art gallery in the world decide that they'll give you one thing, what thing would you take? Is there... Oh, the Mona Lisa. Okay, just for the cash value? Just, just because I look like her and I haven't got my eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> so you pretend like it was a mirror? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, fair enough. There's another Mona Lisa. Did you read this in the news this week? There's a... There's another copy of the Mona Lisa. I mean, there's lots of them, but there's one they think Leonardo da Vinci might have done. Really? Yeah. I mean, really? Yeah, really. It's a very interesting story. Google it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, someone bought it for 45 quid. Could be worth, you know, quite what, a bit of money. Was it him or one of his students? It, well, they always thought it was one. It was an old, but it's definitely the right age, and it, they thought it was from the... the, the but right. then now, someone said, you know, you would, wouldn't you, if you had that? Yeah, well, I think I went, Leonardo da Vinci drew this. When I went to the Louvre to see it, yeah. I mean, I was embarrassed to ask people where it was, because you, you know what I mean? Like, like, where is it? You know, the yeah. one, where is she, uh, indoors sort yeah. of thing, yeah. It's small as well, isn't it? It's not it's impressive. A, it's, it's not, no. And you go, that thing of the eyes following you around. Well, any, any painting does that if they're looking at you while you... I, I paint. I love painting, yeah. yeah. I don't know why I've said that. I'm just Are you as good as Leonardo da Vinci? No. <laughs> no, but I do love painting, and uh, um, I do like art galleries, and I do like the Walker Art Gallery. Okay. It's a fantastic art gallery. I'd take the lamb banana home with me. <laughs> See how far up my arse I could get it. <laughs> I mean, I've tried it in the street, but you get moved on. <laughs> uh, let's, 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 uh, have you ever seen a ghost, Kate Robbins? That's what I want to know from you. No. You? Oh! Don't believe in them. What? Don't believe them. Can I just tell you something else about Liverpool? Which is yes, tell me to talk about Liverpool. A friend of my brother's has got a Punch and Judy um, act that he takes up and down the country all year, right? And this is true. My brother said to him, how's it going? This was in the summer. How's it going? He said, yeah, great. He said, the only place it doesn't go down well, he said, is Liverpool. And Ted said, well, why is that? He said, because every time the policeman comes out and goes, where's Mr Punch? All the kids go, oh, I've not seen him. <laughs> They won't grasp to a policeman, you see. <laughs> Just thought it was an interesting bit of social uh, <laughs> comment there. So go on, ghosts, yeah. Ghosts. You've not, not, so never seen a ghost? No. It's daft. Most actresses have seen ghosts. It's just daft, I believe Because they're, they're, they're mentally ill. Yeah. <laughs> so it's good to know that yeah. you are, you're mentally ill. Was there, a, was there a, a reason you asked that? I, well, because it's exciting if you've seen a ghost, isn't it? And also it, it, it helps me ascertain if you're mental. And you turn out that you aren't. So that's why I was surprised. That was surpri <laughs> I was surprised. Um, I'll, I'll go, we'll go early, because the, the, the people like to hear the early emergency questions that we haven't done for a little while. Um, would you prefer to have a hand made out of ham? A what? Or a hand made out of ham, or an armpit that dispenses sun cream? Is this a question that you've all heard before? They <laughs> They've heard it before, they love it. Hand I'm surprised it didn't get a round of applause, to be honest, just being asked. <laughs> it's like, it's like I'm Paul McCartney, I've just done yesterday, and everyone's going, yeah. It's all right. The latter, the, <laughs> ar the armpit. The armpit, sun cream, not, not a fan of ham. The, gr the ham will no, grow back and you can eat it. No, I'm not a fan of ham. I uh, actually, trying I was... Trying to be vegetarian, trying to be... Yeah, but it wouldn't be meat, it would be made out of your hand. Oh. It would just oh. taste of ham, but you know, no animal would have died to create it, would it? Not, I'm, not, I'm not saying every week we're going to scoop out a bit of a pig and stick it in the ham. 
I'm saying you would, your hand would automatically grow ham. Delicious. Whatever. And you ask this question to find out are other people are mental. Yeah. <laughs> We've already established that. I, uh, Paul McCartney was, I follow Paul McCartney on Twitter because I asked Paul McCartney to be a guest tonight. I'm not going to say which he guest have was going to replace. anything to do with his Twitter account. Uh, and uh, no, I did it through, I, got, I, I went through his agent and his uh, agent immediately me emailed me back, said, I'm just listening to you talking to Jimmy Cricket. This is very interesting. He's not available. Uh, so, but on Twitter, he said, ask me, uh, Paul McCartney, or someone pretending to be Paul McCartney, or, well, I mean, is Paul McCartney pretending to be Paul McCartney? That is the real, that's the real question. That's why I want to have him on, to find out if he's, you probably know, being in the family, if he actually died in a car crash in 1963. It's, it's the sort of thing he sort of would, um, you know, he didn't die in a car crash. Are you sure? Well, yeah, you're in on it, aren't you? That was horrible for the family at the time, all that, though. Yeah. What, him dying in the car crash? I imagine it would be. <laughs> then having to... In, they said, don't worry. No, the whole We've got another bloke in. He looks quite like him. They Turns out he's actually a better songwriter and singer than Paul. He's, he's better. There are whole <laughs> theories of people that say that he's not the original yeah. Paul. I know. I know. I know. I didn't ask him about that. But it's, uh, it's interesting to get... You know, Jane Asher, you had to go, yeah, sorry, carry on going out. He looks the same. Um, <laughs> give him a cake, it'll be fine. Um, I asked him a ham handle or our sun cream armpit. Well, he said, what? He, I said, ask me one question. That's what Paul McCartney on Twitter said. And I said, ham handle or sun cream armpit. What a waste of a question, wasn't it, for Paul? Because he's a vegetarian, he's never going to say ham. Even, he's not going to wait for me to go, oh, don't worry, Paul, you can still eat it. No. Should have asked him if he ever tried to suck his own cock. Had that. Had that. <laughs> had that. I should have asked him, the human centipede, someone said, I do a question when I'll ask, I'll ask you in a second. You know the human centipede, the film The Human Centipede, which is three people I've heard about this, stitched yeah. together uh, mouth to anus. Uh, and I, I said, I should have asked that. And then someone said, you should have asked him which of the two Beatles. <laughs> but it's not, it would definitely, you'd have George Harrison in front and if you were Paul, Paul McCartney, you'd have John Lennon behind. So it's not, that would be a waste of, that's a waste of a question. And Pete Best is watching. <laughs> Maybe it, was, maybe it wasn't so bad after all, Pete. Um, um, if you were in a human centipede with two other people, we could choose that. Oh, no, I'm not going to ask you that. You're a respected member of the show. What's wonderful about uh, you, Kate? It's all right, don't have to. I'll tidy up after myself. I drop things all the time. Um, I think, it's, it, you, you know, you have worked constantly since the uh, 1980 Eurovision Song Contest. That's your first proper job which is not a bad place to start. Mm. And you've worked constantly throughout, throughout all that time and done so many like, impressions, acting, comedy, mm. singing, so many different disciplines. Mm. And I, it, to me, that's, in show business, that's more impressive than anything, I think, isn't it? To be just to... You're being serious now. I do. I would not think wait so. for the bar. But... Oh, no, no, I think it's... I, it's there, there aren't many people who just sort of well, stay at a, I don't know, at a high level as well all the way through. Well, it's quite hard to sort of... Keep earning a living, yeah. 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 But I think if you're in America, you see, um, Tracy Ullman, who I knew years ago, she, before she went to America, she said to me, you know, like, you need to come over to America because they love it when people can do lots of different things in America. Whereas I think in this country, you are looked at as like a sort of, well, what do you do? You know, what are you? Do you know what I mean? They like to pigeonhole you. Yeah, but they, they don't like it if you try something different, no. I think, as well. They, no. If they know you as something, then it's, yeah. it's difficult. Morris right. dancing on... Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think, yeah, it's hot. I don't know. It's is like there a, a secret to it? Is it, is, is, is it, is it? I don't know, it's funny because um, I think you've just got to bring the changes. Like, I liked, I've just been on tour with a show called Club Tropicana, which is an, an 80s musical tour thing. And I played the Spanish um, cleaning lady. And I was annoyed because somebody said, yes, the, oh, the stereotypical obese. And I went, hang on a minute, obese. <laughs> that, I was more worried about the word obese. Um, but, um, I think you've got to bring the changes and just like do theatre, and then you've got to do a bit of telly, and then you've got to do a bit of this, a bit of that. But it's the, yeah. I think it's also being able to adapt, which, which I think, again, I think some of the 80s entertainers, or certainly the 70s entertainers going into mm. the 80s, they couldn't, things sort of changed in the 80s, which is, it was an interesting place to, for your career to start because there was, there was that variety, there was the, that sort of comedy, and then it, it kind of, yeah. throughout the 80s, it changed into something completely different. Yeah, but I you mean, I went on Harry Enfield doing Sarah Ferguson when they got engaged. Ferg Sarah Ferguson and Andrew got engaged. 
And I gave her that stupid laugh, you know, sort of, and I did a joke. They've named a pudding after me at Buckingham Palace. It's called Ginger Sponge. <laughs> <laughs> and the poor woman had never, ever made that noise <laughs> in her life. And when I met her, and she said, why did you give me that awful noise, that, you know, on Spitting Image and every time you do it? <laughs> and um, I said, I just don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> Has to be yourself, out to be a nice yeah. guy there. Gotta be it. yourself. Quite rude of me. I wonder, I wonder if she knew. <laughs> what, uh, and what Andrew was up to, we can't talk about it. So it's. Um... <laughs> well, I say to Emily, you know, my daughter Emily. Yeah, I was going to talk about Emily. I say, you know, because like she does impressions, because she's she's got a natural talent for, you know, impressions and but i have said to her don't go down that road of just being an impressionist because it, it really does go nowhere because like you know steve coogan was an impressionist to start off with yeah. lenny henry was you know you don't you can't do it forever no it's something a bit sad about seeing somebody of my age doing impressions. i think i don't actually like doing impressions <laughs> although i can't help it do you know what i mean but it's a wonderful skill to have it it's, it's i know but it's like it's... kim woodburn when i do her you know there's, there's like Oh, my dirty, filthy, stinking bitch. <laughs> I tell you what, my love, she's a dirty, stinking, filthy bitch. And then, I, and then I met up with the woman, and she was dead nice, you know. She got the eye, she can't help that. <laughs> but that's really cruel, isn't it, to do somebody's dodgy eye like that? Yeah. And that's just cruel, it's not very nice. I'm glad you've moved on from, uh, from doing it. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, saying. It's, it's not I nice. can't stop myself from doing it. <laughs> and when I met her, she was really nice, and I felt bad, and she said, you know... Why did you do the eye? <laughs> you dirty, stinking, filthy bitch. <laughs> but um, it's just cruel. It's yeah. so cruel. To be a good impressionist, you have to be horrible and cruel. You yeah. yeah. Well, it's true, but yeah, so it's... Well, A, I was, I was watching you singing your, your song from Crossroads on, uh, on YouTube, and you and Emily, Emily looks very like you. I think it's fair to say that, that there's, a, there's a big similarity there. What's, mm. what's it like seeing your... Daughter becoming like big. Yeah, well, when I saw her well. uh, stand up show and she talks about, you know, having it off a lot. <laughs> and that's quite hard for a parent yeah. to listen to. She does a whole routine about when you're having it off and you're on top of a bloke. And it's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> don't think I want to see my daughter doing that. But um, apart from that, I'm very proud of her. Yeah. <laughs> she was on that I'm Celebrity, obviously, as well. Yeah. Did, you, did you go? That was, you... Do you know, I went out there. Yeah. Doing I'm a Celebrity, we, as a family, we all sat around in a big meeting going, like, does she do it or not? And I said, well, what's the worst that can happen is that she gets voted off first? Because that would be a bit embarrassing if you're the first one off. Yeah. And then I thought, she won't get voted off first. She's young. It's always the, the old ones, isn't it, that get voted <laughs> yeah. off. You haven't been on it, have you? I haven't, no. I've been, I got voted off before. <laughs> and it was the best thing she's ever done because yeah. people got to see her showcase her talents, you know. So. Yeah, mm. yeah. But now I'm Emily Atak's mum. That's all I'm known as. <laughs> yeah. You wait till your kids are doing yeah. stand -up. I'll be dead by then. That's the beauty. Yes. <laughs> a, I'm giving them lots of material so they can have a dead dad show. It's great. <laughs> the, you need that as a comedian. Uh, they are. They're, they're, fu they're funny. My daughter is a cheeky little... She was giving me advice about... I was telling you about stage, but she was... We, she, she sort of got into knowing that knock-knock jokes are a thing, but she doesn't understand how they work. So her knock-knock joke, you go, she says, knock-knock, who's there? Dr. Bear, she says, for some reasons, which there must be, she must have heard one with something like this in. And then you go, Dr. Bear who? She goes, Dr. Bear, he went down the street, he did a poo, and then he jumped in the toilet and ran around and does a long sort of monologue. And I crack up laughing. He goes, I made you laugh. I go, yeah. Then he goes, you do one. And I go, not like who's there. <laughs> and you go, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, fee, uh, You're not as good as she Well, is. I'm not as good. I'm trying to think of a real one. <laughs> I'm trying She's funnier than you. I'm trying to think of a, a real one, but you know, you know, Isabel, Isabel, necessarily on a bicycle. She's going, no, that's not funny because you need to have some poo in there and have some... <laughs> so she'll, she'll. I think she's probably right. Yeah, she's that. right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, she's already the. I'm, I'm, I'm now the third funniest person in our family, uh, but you know, I'm funnier than my son. You got a son, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Uh, funnier than my son is what I said. He's my two-year-old. I'm not. He's pretty funny too. Competitive <laughs> oh. dad. Yeah. yeah, I'll take him on. Uh, you worked with Sean Hughes? Do you remember working oh, on Sean's show? Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Oh, sad about him. It was very sad about him. There's Sean. another one gone. Yeah, you killed him. <laughs> the thing is, you've got, you know, you've got that magic thing that stops heart attacks and you could have given it to all of the... <laughs> 
members of Last Summer Wine. Don't be horrible. <laughs> They're never saving that oh. up for my brother. <laughs> Sean was lovely. He um, was, yeah. But, you know, poor old Sean. Yeah, oh. I liked him. He was nice. He was good to work. Yeah, but this, you know, that's show, it's a weird thing, show business, and it is. Mm. It does have these, you know, it has these casualties yeah. of, you know, of, because of that. People trying to kind of replicate. Yeah. I suppose. I mean, to... Peter Kay. When I when I went up for um, to I had to audition for the role of um, the sex. Uh, 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 what, what's, what's that company called? Sex toys. And Summers, thanks. So, so the part was, it was called Ladies' Night, the episode, and she was, um, I was playing um, an Ann Summers sex toy seller. And um, the reason I got that job was because I made Peter laugh, because I went in, I took a carrot on the train, and I fashioned it in front of him into a penis. <laughs> and that made him laugh. Yeah. You know, made Peter laugh. Yeah. But he's, uh, he's going to be back soon, I think. Yeah. 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 So it's, but it's, you know, you, what, do you, are, you, are you glad that, you're, that it's the family business? Is it, is it, is it worrying seeing your Well, the thing is, my dad was always, he was always so showbiz and he, everything had to be showbiz. Like, he was the one who taught, you know, Paul and John Lennon, you know, to, to play and like, do, they used to tell them to stick their guitars up their arse when they went, ooh. And they, <laughs> Paul always says, thank God we didn't take his advice. You know? <laughs> but um, my dad used to always use showbiz references. Like, there was a woman in the chemist in our village and he'd say, oh, she's killing the front of house, that woman. She's really killing the front of house. It's like, Dad, it's a chemist. <laughs> he'd say, no, she's on now if you want to go and see her. She's on. <laughs> you mean she's working? <laughs> So everything was a, a showbiz term. Yeah. And then when I got my honorary degree of, um, a, you know, the degree ceremony is very dull and it goes on for hours and you're just queuing up and then you just get your degree. My dad was there and he hadn't spoken to my husband since we'd split up. And so my husband came to see me get my degree, but they'd been like, they hadn't spoken for two years. And I thought, God, what are they going to say to each other? And they were just standing there and my husband looked at my dad and it had been going on for hours. And my dad just turned to him and he went, It'll never tour. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, everything was showbiz to him. Yeah. He was just Mr. Showbiz. He yeah. really was. So, yeah. he was great in that respect. So, what have you got? Have you got anything planned coming up that when we... we well, I'm doing Hitchin about? Comedy Store next month. Are you? Come I'll come and see you. That's where, really, really near where I live. Do you live there? Yeah. Oh, I'm doing the town hall there. Are you? Uh, with Tony Slattery, yeah. Oh, are you? Okay, cool. Remember I'll, Tony Slattery? I do. He did. He did the, my podcast in Edinburgh. Yeah, it was extremely good. Well, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So you're doing it. you something together or something? Separate? No, we're just doing our own. Your own bits. So I'm doing a bit at the piano. We're just doing a little thing there. Yeah, yeah. It's a comedy night. Comedy night. Yeah. Fantastic. That's about all I've got in my book plan. <laughs> <laughs> there will be more. Yes. Kate Robbins. I can say that for sure. Thank you so much for coming you. Uh, to Liverpool, ladies and gentlemen. Kate Robbins. <laughs> Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Yeah, we'll see you next week. Come on, next week. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>